so hello everyone uh, welcome to this new session so in this session we are going to be solving uh, one important problem which is related to the biot sevets law okay so only one problem in this session and it's a very important problem okay so the question is we need to find the magnetic field intensity h at point p due to an infinitely long current carrying conductor okay so this is a question here so according to the question i have given one diagram that is i am going to explain it right now i have given a three dimensional surface uh, which consists of x y and z axis okay and i have uh, placed an infinitely long current carrying conductor uh, uh, along the z axis and placed symmetrically with respect to the origin okay symmetrically means in a uh, straight path which is uh, placed with respect to the origin okay so this z axis is goes from minus infinity to plus infinity as you can see and in in place in the symmetrically with respect to y axis i have drawn a point p okay and after that from the point uh, of uh, end of the conductor i have uh, drawn on line which is touching at point p so that it makes an angle theta and also from this origin to point p the distance is uh, uh, measured as rho and here the a vector which you have uh, formed is a r vector that is also we can call it as a position vector and here the length of the infinitely long can current carrying conductor from zero to the point uh, of uh, intersection in the z axis i have uh, named it as uh, idl okay since it is a current carrying conductor so we will be considering this i component as well so now uh, we need to apply the biot sevres law condition you know that the formula is dh is equal to idl cross ar vector divided by 4 pi into magnitude of r square here okay so this is the formula so now according to this formula let's find the value of r first so r vector here since the r vector is in this direction so we have the two points here p and this point this point let's name it as q okay so one by one we need to be su subtracting the coefficient that is rho minus 0 phi minus phi and 0 minus z so that is rho minus 0 a rho vector plus phi minus phi a phi vector plus 0 minus z a z vector so this phi and phi get gets cancelled so the remaining terms are r is equal to rho minus 0 is rho a times rho minus 0 minus z is minus z a cap z okay so this is the value of r we are which we have got okay so now after taking the magnitude of r that is we will be getting it as rho square minus of minus uh, z square okay that we will be getting it as r is equal to square root of rho square plus z square okay so now we got the value of r so we can say that the unit vector ar is equal to r divided by magnitude of r okay so that is we will be getting ar vector as the value of r we got it as rho a rho minus z a z divided by magnitude of r is square root of rho square plus z square so this is the value of ar vector here okay so now substitute these uh, conditions in this for main formula here these and all which whichever we have got now substitute in this formula that is dh also before that we have one more condition that is dl here dl is mentioned right so dl is mentioned that dl is equal to dz okay because this uh, infinitely long current carrying conductor is symmetrical about z axis so that's why uh, this dl we can uh, consider it as dz since the element or the conductor is along z direction okay so we can mention this reason and uh, go further in this problem so element is along z direction we'll further solve it now so now our value of dh what we are getting is i into dl uh, in place of dl we writing it as uh, dz okay and uh, dz into a cap z vector okay into the value of uh, ar vector or whatever we have got that is rho a times rho divided by uh, sorry minus z into a times z divided by 4 pi into 
magnitude of r square okay since you have got the r, r here that is r is equal to square root of uh, square root of rho square plus z square and the uh, r square what we will be getting it as this is square root get cancelled and the remaining term is rho square plus z square okay so that's why 4 pi into rho square plus z square okay divided by this uh, what uh, AR vector, right? So unit vector AR in the denominator side we had one uh, square root of rho square plus z square, right? So this we would be writing it as rho square plus z square whole to the power half, okay? Yeah, so now again further simplifying it, dh is equal to i dz az vector rho a cap rho minus z a cap z divided by so here 4 pi and this uh, is uh, rho square plus z square to the power 1 so we can say that same base uh, and the different powers so we can add the powers so after adding 1 plus 1 by 2 we would be getting it as 3 by 2 so rho square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 okay So this is cross product here okay one cross symbol is there so now we need to be applying the cross product for one by one that is i dz you keep it as it is so az cross rho times a rho okay we know that az cross a rho so z and rho rho phi z rho phi z so we can see that z and rho are moving in a clockwise direction symmetrical so the value of az cross a rho is equal to rho times a phi okay and az cross az is 0 we know that so that's why this whole term would be 0 so this is the term in the numerator side and 4 pi into square root uh, rho square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 okay so hope you understood this step so i'm, I'm telling you telling it again so az cross a rho okay so cross product of any two unit vectors you might be knowing it as z and rho it, it's in the same clockwise direction see the order of this uh, uh, what to say in uh, cylindrical coordinate system we will be uh, the order is rho phi z right so if we see this in a clockwise direction rho phi z and after z again rho comes right so that's why a z cross a rho the the answer is a phi plus a phi okay since it is in the clockwise direction only okay so that's why we would be getting it as plus a phi the cross product of any two uh, unit vectors is the third unit vector which is remaining which it, and it is dependent on the uh, direction whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise so whether it's, if it is anti-clockwise then the sign would be changing to minus and then it would be remaining it as plus and uh, cross product of any two same unit vectors the answer is always zero okay since the angle between them is sign so that's why so this is the further simplified expression of dh write it as equation 1 okay so now to find the total magnetic field intensity due to an infinite long conductor we need to integrate this uh, above equation okay from uh, the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity okay since uh, in the diagram it's mentioned that it is an infinitely long current carrying conductor so that's why we don't know its length ap approximate length so we are drawing it approximately okay so that's why uh, let's uh, take the limits as from minus infinity to plus infinity okay so now uh, in order to remove this dh so only h would be remaining and uh, integrating this term that is from minus infinity to infinity that is i rho dz a phi vector okay divided by 4 pi into rho square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 okay so that is h is equal to i rho divided by 4 pi take it outside it's a constant minus infinity to infinity the remaining term is dz divided by rho square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 a phi vector so here we can say that uh, since uh, minus infinity to infinity equal to 2 times of 0 to infinity okay there is a condition right so if we this is placed in the center right where the how one part of the uh, infinitely long current conductor belongs to plus infinity and one part be belongs to minus infinity if we stretch this conductor to only the positive x-axis positive infinity graph so we would be getting we have 
since it was placed at the center at the origin and this part is moved, moved to the positive side so this part would be coming here so that's why it would be twice the uh, part from 0 to infinity okay so that's why I have written minus infinity to infinity is equal to 2 times 0 to infinity in order to make our calculation easier that is h is equal to 2 times of 0 to infinity so this would be 2 i rho divided by 4 pi and the limit changes from 0 to infinity now bz divided by rho square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 a 5 8 okay so now we need to be applying some substitution method here okay that is we need to be taking z is equal to rho tan theta okay so i will be telling you the angle that why we have taken it as a rho tan theta since in this uh, uh, in this graph we can see that uh, we are having an angle theta okay and this uh, z direction and here it is uh, forming an hypotenuse triangle and the preference angle which we have taken always for a right angle triangle is always uh, tan only so that's why we have taken it as z equal to rho tan theta since the length we are considering it as rho so that's why z equal to rho tan theta so now uh, differentiating on both sides we would be getting dz is equal to rho uh, the differentiation of tan theta is second square theta d theta okay so now we need, we, we need to be checking that at z is equal to 0 the value of theta is equal to 0 so if you want you can check it that is rho tan theta is equal to 0 so tan theta would be equal to 0 so theta would be equal to tan inverse of 0 right so again theta is 0 yeah so since uh, the value of z equal to 0 I have just checked this condition so z e at z equal to 0 theta equal to 0 and at z equal to infinity the value of uh, theta we would be getting it as uh, let's check it rho tan theta equal to infinity so tan theta equal to infinity again so theta is equal to tan inverse of infinity so we know that tan inverse of infinity is equal to 90 degrees so theta we are getting it as 90 degrees so now the limits would change okay this these limits were for z so now we need to be changing the limits for theta so now the value of h we need to be considering as 2 i rho by 4 pi from 0 to 90 degree rho secant square theta d theta since the value of uh, dz is equal to rho secant square theta d theta divided by rho square plus z square the value of z is rho tan theta so this would be rho square tan square theta whole to the power 3 by 2 okay so now we can neglect this a phi component okay it was just for our reference so this two ones are two twos are so h is equal to i rho by 2 pi 0 to 90 degree okay so rho second square theta d theta divided by rho cube second cube theta so now how i would be telling how we have uh, we have got this rho cube second cube theta so here i would be solving that that is rho square plus rho square tan square theta whole to the power 3 by 2 right so here in this uh, inside bracket term we can see that rho square is common so rho square into 1 plus tan square theta whole to the power 3 by 2 so rho square into we know that 1 plus tan square theta according to trigonometric formula it is secant square theta whole to the power 3 by 2 so now rho square into 3 by 2 so 2 2 would be get cancelled so rho cube secant square theta into 3 by 2 2 2 would be getting cancelled again so remaining term is secant cube theta so that's why you are getting it as rho cube secant cube theta okay so now h is equal to i rho by 2 pi 0 to 90 degree so here we can see that we can cancel rho rho here so this would be rho square so this would be secant square theta d theta divided by rho square secant cube theta so here one row and one row would be getting cancelled and here secant square theta and secant cube theta so this here in the denominator will be only remaining with 
second theta so this is i by 2 pi 0 to 90 degree d theta divided by secant theta okay so now here a few more steps are left so now let's solve that so one i by 2 pi rho is left okay since we are here we are remaining with one rho term so that is i by 2 pi rho so now h is equal to i by 2 pi rho of 0 to 90 degree and we know that d theta divided by secant theta since 1 by secant theta is equal to cos theta from trigonometric identity so this would be i by 2 pi rho of 0 to 90 degree cos theta d theta so that is equal to i by 2 pi rho of integration of uh, 1 by second theta is cos theta so cos 90 degree minus cos 0 applying the limits ok so that is h is equal to i by 2 pi rho of cos 90 is 1 and cos 0 is 0 so now finally we are getting the answer as i by 2 pi rho into a5 vector ok so this is the final answer which we are getting it for magnetic field intensity in this case this is the answer so here we can see that this magnetic field intensity here is directly proportional to the current here and it is inversely proportional to the radial distance okay so this is the relationship which we have obtained that is h is directly proportional to the current and uh, this is uh, magnetic field intensity is inversely proportional to the radial distance that is 2 pi rho okay this one we can say that the field along around the conductor forms the concentric circles okay so it kind of satisfies the condition so this was all about this problem hope you understood this problem please uh, go through the steps one by one so i have solved it in a very uh, easy manner step by step manner since this question is multiple times repeated question in the exam this would be occurring okay also you can uh, refer our model question paper videos okay this would be appearing in our playlist so it would be appearing in the right of your screen now we have solved the model question paper solutions also for you guys so please refer those videos okay so that's all thank you